Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at is Casper K-Heavy Hash vulnerable to attacks on the network and the implications of the attacks. So we've had this going on for the past couple of days between the WhoSat network and one of the developers of Casper Coin and is mainly talking about how to attack Casper, not in a malicious sense as per se, but more on the K-Heavy Hash algorithm. And this includes basics of the attack vector against K heavy hash, where you can build it from comprehensible at GPU, VPU, FPGA, ASIC development. So this came out a few days ago, and then this was posted after it. As promised, we are delivering. Here's a blog on how to attack Casper with K heavy hash, probabilistic shortcut vulnerability. We have concluded that even Ice River KS5 Pro can benefit from attack and possibly make eight times more profit per day. So this is their whole blog about how to attack the Casper network. Now I'm not going to get into it in a technical sense, but I'm going to give you a very brief overview. And mainly it's about attacking on a certain frequency of the blocks happening. So it's about the 0 times 5 1 blocks and they occur every 2.6 hours. And it says here you might consider starting your mining efforts exclusively on these blocks until one is found. After securing one of the blocks, you could switch to regular mining for two hours before reverting back to these blocks for another hour or two until you find another one of these. So what they're basically saying is you can skip a certain function within the hashing algorithm to select four blocks. And then once you hit one of those blocks, you could actually take it off and go over to regular mining whilst you're looking for blocks. Obviously, I don't want to get technical with it because personally, I know some sort of technical stuff, but not this technical and not a lot of people are really going to know that. So I'm kind of explaining it in a very, very brief way. As I said, what it means is basically you can select which blocks you want to and they're going to occur more frequently than other blocks on the network. And because they occur more frequently, you can actually stick or point hash rate towards just these certain types of blocks until you hit them and then move back onto normal mining. So... Overall, if I got that wrong, please let me know in the comments, but that's kind of what I'm getting from here. To implement this strategy effectively, it'll be essential to establish data synchronization between the node and the mining software. So what this basically is, would be uh, some sort of API integration to say once you've hit a zero times five one block, it would actually switch back to normal mining until, you know, the time period has passed and then you would look for that block again in the next 2.6 hours as you can see here. Now it does go on to say this approach allows for time in the attack while distributing the workload between standard calculations and the k-heavy hash attack. And then if we scroll down here it says what kind of machines do you need for attacking the Casper network. So you would actually need quite a lot of hash rate because you have to hit a block every 2.6 hours basically and it says here attacking a block that happens around every 2.6 hours an Antminer KS5 Pro can currently earn 151.2 Casper coin in 24 hours. That means the best Casper miner currently finds almost two blocks a day. Utilizing this, it could earn eight blocks a day in daily, raising the profit to 849 Casper in 24 hours. K heavy hash ASIC miners would get around 20% speed boost from removing the matrix multiplication. This means 21 terahash could be 25.2 terahash. And then it goes on to question, can you still call this a vulnerability on the Casper network? Me personally, after looking at a lot of the things that we see on here and looking through the whole thing, this is not really an attack that can be performed on a network that's going to necessarily damage it because you can obviously gain more Casper coin, but there will probably be a time where ASICs can skip this step already and that brings a net neutral to the network. One example that we kind of have of this is on Dynex. Do you remember when SRB miner, they had a step where you would skip the actual proof of useful work and only do the proof of work. And that meant that people were getting around 20% more on SRB miner for their GPUs because they were skipping that step in the algorithm. Subsequently, I think Dynex changed it so you couldn't do that anymore on the network. The same kind of applies here where if you're on SRB miner, that basically means that everyone would flock to SRB miner, which means it would be net neutral because everyone's using that same method. Same kind of thing goes here. If over time, a lot of people stick their ASICs onto these 0.51 blocks, that would basically mean that there'd be more hash rate trying to hit one of them, which means that everyone else would get ousted out. And over time, it basically becomes net neutral. 
Another example of this would probably be the Ice River overclocks. So you see the overclocks coming in for Ice River, and basically the only thing that it actually did was actually increase the network hash rate. The profitability went down just because everyone was mining on these machines, and then everyone gets more hash rate, but the profitability doesn't change. It only changes for those people who haven't updated to OC on their Casper miners, or the Bitmain ones that were on the network at the time. So you can kind of see how as the network progresses over time, it just becomes net neutral, these type of things. So one of the Casper developers came out with this a couple of days ago, and I'm just going to read the TLDR because the rest of it is quite a lot to read. But it says that they point out some research of K-heavy hash carried out by Lolly Deeb, I think that's the developer of LolMiner. In this research, they noticed that one of the computational steps in K-heavy hash called the multiplication matrix, I believe that's what it's called, provides less randomness than it was supposed to. So it's talking about the 0 times 5, 1 blocks that they're talking about. This is a consequence of a bug in implementation. While K-heavy hash was subject, it also it actually applies just as well to the original heavy hash algorithm. So the K-heavy hash is built on top of the heavy hash algorithm as a building block. This was already noted in public discussion almost three years ago, where it's determined to be a non-issue. And then it says that they've been trying to argue that this implies a vulnerability in K-heavy hash that could affect the security of the network. Later backtrack that from the statement. So we're talking about the WhoSat network, these developers on there. However, the LolMiner developer said that the most severe possible consequences are there might be mining strategies that could skip the step. He also agrees that calling K-heavy hash broken based on this is unreasonable and points out that his work and name were used without his permission. So kind of like what I just said, it isn't vulnerable in terms of security. It's more vulnerable for profitability of miners. It doesn't actually attack the network as per se. It just gives people the ability to get ahead in terms of profitability. And then it goes on to say, but now it suffices to the point that with this step constitutes about 10% of the computational steps when computing on a GPU and about 20% on ASICs. That is, even if a strategy is found to skip the step without any overheads, that would still only incur a small improvement. In reality, such a strategy will have overhead which will make it less meaningful as an optimization and plausibly greater than the gain. So I don't know what they mean in terms of overhead specifically, but I'm assuming that's how much energy you'd put into it to get it back out to actually skip the step, something like that. And then the lol miner developer thinks it's likely that eventually ASICs will be designed to skip the step. As I said, kind of the same thing with the SRB miner. If everyone has the ability to skip the step, they will do it, but then profitability is just going to be the same for everyone. But either way, this is just another increment in the ASIC optimization. Currently, ASICs are already more than 10 times more efficient than the first generation of ASICs. So as I said, it kind of is a net neutral thing. It doesn't really matter specifically on the network. It does kind of matter for now, but in the future, it's probably going to be skipped anyway. So there's probably going to be ASIC developers that will skip it, and then people will flock to them to buy them, and the profitability will stay the same for all ASIC miners across the board. It goes on to say the significance of it is that it was believed in this step would be very easy and cheap to compute on optical chips, ushering in optical mining. So that's kind of a future type of mining that will probably be coming very soon, so optical ASICs. However, later research revealed that this matrix is not suitable for optical mining, so any project going the optical route could use the current implementation of heavy hash. It does go on to do a bunch of calculations down there. Obviously, this one has a bunch of calculations as well. You can check them out yourself. I'll leave them in the description so you can kind of have a look at it. As I said, with the overclocks that came in for the Ice River miners, that basically made everything a net neutral again because the profitability stayed the same. So it didn't really matter if you could overclock it. It only mattered for the first couple of weeks when people received those overclocks before anyone else. So there might be a way to gain the system right now, but as soon as everyone kind of gets onto gaining the system and ASIC developers, so Bitmain, Ice River, learn how to skip the step, it doesn't actually affect the network too much because all the miners are going to still be as profitable as each other if everyone skips the step. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. Obviously, there is still new things coming out. You can check it out on Twitter and you can have a look around on the articles linked in the description. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.